Good morning, welcome to today's video. So I have to go out anyway because I need to pick something up from the pharmacy. So I thought while I was out, I might as well take my sketchbook to the cafe and go and do a little bit of sketching. So come with me. So I'm home and as always it was lovely drawing in the coffee shop. Uh, not too many people out today but it's a very windy and blustery day out there so I got a bit of sketching done. I picked up my prescription, I went to the charity shop on the way home and I found a couple of kids books in there. If you don't know, hello, I'm Emma. I'm an illustrator in Sheffield and I have a children's book obsession. No, uh, I like buying children's books secondhand from the charity shops um, to kind of like I know, interesting kids books. I like looking through them. I like seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, seeing how kids books are made because in 2024, I'm going to start the process of applying for agents and approaching publishers with some children's book ideas that I've got. Uh, but first, right, before I get on and show you what I got in the charity shop, I'm going to have a, a, a smidge of lunch. So I will see you in two ticks. So let me show you the books that I got. So, this first one looks, it, it looks pretty old. Well, firstly, the clue that it might be a bit old is that the original price was £1.95. <laughs> um, and it looks, inside, the paper looks like, it's got like a stamped texture. It's written by Chizuko Kuratomi and illustrated by Kozo Kakimoto. And it's Mr. Bear Goes to Sea. It feels like a kind of hardback, softback. So the card, I've never, I've never seen a book kind of laid out like this, which is one of the reasons I find it really interesting looking in charity shops, because you always find like interesting stuff. So in the UK, um, it does say it's a UK publisher. I'm wondering if it's been published in the UK from abroad, because the, it's like a softback, but the, it's like a really hard cardboard. And like I say, inside the paper looks almost like it's printed on like plastic almost. So yeah, it's called Mr. Bear Goes to Sea. And there's a whole load more in the series. Uh, remember Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear Goes to Sea, Mr. Bear's Trumpet, Mr. Bear's Meal, Mr. Bear and the Robbers, Mr. Bear in the Air, Mr. Bear Station Master, Mr. Bear Postman. Let me see, I can't find any publishing years. So it's published by MacDonald. London and Sydney and it just gets straight into it look so there's Mr Bear there and that's this is the first line of the book printed straight on the back of the cover uh, Mr Bear had always lived high up on a mountain now he wanted to go to sea and be a sailor and there he is with his sailor bits and bobs on let me just see if I can find a year sometimes the publishing stuff's in the back but it was so interestingly oh here it is it was so interestingly um like 
the paper was so interesting and the and the board was so interesting and the illustrations were so interesting that I just I just had to had to get it. So here it says it was originally published in Tokyo in September 1967. So I was right, it's not a, a UK publication originally, it's a Japanese book, which is interesting. And also, coincidentally, I have decided to start learning Japanese as well on Duolingo. I'll pop, if I, if I can share my kind of profile details on Duolingo, I'll pop them in the comments and you can come and say hello on there. I don't really know if you can say hello on Duolingo, but if you're on Duolingo as well, it's all free, I'm not sponsored. Uh, I'll pop, I'll, if I can, I'll pop my details down below so we can all say hello to each other in our various languages. Uh, so it was first published by Shiko Shako Limited in Tokyo in September 1967. And then in 1968, McDonald & Co took it up, first published in Great Britain in 1968. Uh, and then second impression, third impression, fourth impression, so I'm assuming this is the fourth impression, 1984, a year after I was born. And it was printed in Japan by Topan Printing Co. Limited in Osaka. And I, I can totally tell that that is not a book that was printed using UK kind of traditional publishing means. Uh, it's so interesting. The paper is, is lovely and it's really nice to see a book from other countries and other cultures. It's great. I'll have a quick flick through and I'll read it properly later. The illustrations are lovely. I love the palette. I don't think I've got any books, any second-hand books anyway, like picture books like this that are from the 60s. I've got in my store, I've got some like old Rupert annuals and stuff like that, but they're not set out in a kind of traditional, as we would know in today's, in today's world, like a picture book like this. I don't remember ever seeing a picture book laid out as we would know a picture book like this going back to the 60s. I might be wrong, I might be completely wrong. Such lovely illustrations. But yeah, I don't know if what if, if you grew up as a child in the 60s, did you have picture books that were this kind of dimension? Because these are the kind of dimensions that we're used to now. Because the books that I've experienced from the 60s were like bigger kind of annual books, or is that just my experience? I might have, I might have only ever seen those. It's nice, really nice. So I'm looking forward to having a look through that, look and see what the illustrations are like, what the story, how the story builds. <laughs> Very nice. So um, I was really pleased to find that because it's something just a little bit different. And then I got this one, which is Osiri and the Bala Mengro. And it intrigued me because I didn't know what most of these words meant. <laughs> I don't know if I'm meant to. So on the back it says, a traveller girl named Asiri, makes her own musical instrument from a willow branch and lots of recycled objects. Although she plays it enthusiastically, she makes a terrible noise. Ignoring warnings not to wake the ogre in the hills, Asiri climbs away from the camp to practice. Will she wake the ogre and will it appreciate her playing? Told by a Romani storyteller and a picture book author, this original tale offers a fascinating insight into travelling lifestyles and cultures. That's really interesting. So it's by Richard O'Neill and Catherine Cornby. Catherine Quornby, illustrated by Hannah Tolson. Oh my God, look at the inside, gorgeous. Uh, so this was published in 2016 by Child's Play International. And it looks almost like paper cuts, um, like collage paper cutting. I'll show, I'll, I'll, again, I'll just flick through it so you can see the kind of thing. Again, I love the palette. I'll really enjoy reading that. Look at those greens. I find it really tricky to use greens myself, but that I really like them in pictures. But you can see what I mean about like this is a book from the 2000s, 2016, and this was from 1967. How similar this format is to this one, which we're used to now. And uh, so yeah, let me know in the comments if you if you know whether this in the 60s was a regular kind of format or if this was something that was new and this is kind of like, th this would have stood out as something different compared to what you were used to seeing on the shelves. But yeah, I'm very happy with both of those. I'll be reading those with a hot chocolate later. So what I'm gonna do for the rest of the afternoon is just sit here and chill out with my little notepad. I got this at the beginning of last year. I never use notepads. 
and diaries, uh, but I always have the good plans and good intentions too. So to avoid wasting it, I'm going to use this and I'm going to write down some things to apply for this year as part of my rejections list. If you haven't heard me say this, I'm going to follow Katie Chappell's advice. Katie Chappell is an illustrator and she is one third of the Good Ship Illustration. She's got her own YouTube channel. I'll link the video down below where she talks about her rejection list actually. I've mentioned it before, but if you knew, you might not have seen me talk about it. Um, and to get, she, she started it for herself a little while ago. To overcome her fear of rejection, she started a rejections list. So she'd, uh, she'd aim to get 100, 100 rejections in a year, I think it was anyway. And she wasn't intent, she wasn't doing this so she'd set out to do bad work to get rejected. She was using it as like a tally because the more time if you never apply for things because you're scared to be rejected you'll never get accepted and if you try and see it as a game like oh well this rejection at least i can check it off on my tally it kind of it it gives you a reason to apply to things and it takes away the fear of not getting accepted because you're not going to get accepted onto everything. As brilliant as you might be, you're not going to get accept accepted onto everything. But it's funny enough, she said that as soon as she started aiming to fill up her rejections list and she was applying for things left, right and centre, she had to kind of put a pause on it because she had so much work from applying for things that she probably wouldn't have applied to before because she was trying to face her fear of rejection and she had the rejections list of some things fall back on if she didn't get accepted. But she said it's funny how much she did actually get accepted for. So I'm going to chill out, put some nice music on, search through Instagram and stuff like that for competitions I can enter this year. Maybe like some agents I can apply to, illustration agents and literary agents and stuff like that. And just get a list of things so when January comes around, I can hit the ground running with things that I can start applying to. There's no pressure for me to do it now. But I know me, if I don't have a list, I won't, I won't get it done. So I'm going to just take the pressure off and chill out and just lazily search the internet for things that when it comes back to me being back at work in January, because at the moment, I'm still not, my brain is still not at work, uh, even though I'm, you know, I'm drawing every day and you know sketching and thinking about things like this I'm, I'm the pressure's still not on in my head I'm still very much on holiday but yeah it'll definitely help if I've got a list of things ready to hit the ground running and actually get going with things in January so that is where I'm going to leave this video thanks so much for joining me so until the next one bye